When I first started this channel, I was mostly focused on Android security, and I made a lot of videos about different hacking techniques and different things you can do with Android apps. It's been a little while since I made any videos specifically about Android hacking, and I've actually had a few comments asking about that recently, and I did want to get back to that. So I thought I would do that by solving the OWASP Android Uncrackable Level 3. I've already made videos solving level 1 and level 2, so if you want to check those out, they're on my channel. But level 3 is a bit more complex. I've already installed the APK on my Android emulator, so I'm going to try to launch it and see what happens. So when I launch it, it says rooting or tampering detected. This is unacceptable. The app is now going to exit. So back when we looked at some of the previous challenges, I don't remember if it was level one or level two, or maybe it was both of them. But previously we had to bypass root detection and we did that with Frida. However, this time it says rooting or tampering detected. So that tells me that we're probably going to have to bypass not only root detection, but tampering detection too, which is probably going to mean Frida detection. So first thing we can do is pull up the APK in JADX and try to take a look at the source code and see what's happening. So if we take a look in JADX and take a look at the main activity, the first thing that I notice is there's this XOR key string. So I don't know what exactly this does, but I definitely want to keep that in mind because it's probably going to come into play later. So if we scroll down and look at on create, we see that it runs this verify libs check. So it looks like that it's doing something looking at the architecture and checking the checksum. And uh, it seems like it's making sure that the actual binary hasn't been changed or something like that. But we didn't get any sort of errors that had to do with the invalid checksum. So I think we're good there. And as we look at what it does next, it is doing something with that XOR key string. So that's probably going to come in later. But first we need to get past that rooting and tampering error. And we see right here that this is that error message that we were getting, rooting or tampering detected. And we see that there are several different root checks and there's also a integrity check and there's also this tampered variable that it's checking. And if we wanted to, we could break down the code in Ghidra and take a look at the assembly in that native code and try to figure out exactly what it's doing in all these root checks and integrity checks and tampering checks and try to figure out exactly how to bypass those. And if you are interested in that sort of reversing type stuff, there are some walkthroughs that are available that are linked on that main OWASP page. However, I know that there are already some root and some tampering protection bypasses that are already available in the code share. So I want to try those first and see if those work. And if it doesn't work, then I'll go through and try to do the reversing and figure out exactly what it's doing to come up with a custom solution myself. But whenever possible, I want to try to use the code that is already available for me because it's just less work for me. So I'm going to create my file that I'm going to use to put together my free script that I'm going to use to solve this. And I'm just going to call it crackme3.js. And I'm just going to copy all this code from this free.antiroot script that I've used before. And I'm going to paste it into that file. So I have my free script ready to bypass root and I've run the Frida server on my mobile device. And now I've run that smoke test, so I have the package name of my binary. And now I'm ready to run my Frida script. So I'm gonna run Frida-L, the name of my Frida script, dash F, then the package name, and then dash U. And when I ran that, it launched for a second, but then it still crashed. So I can see up here in the logs that it was bypassing the root detection. So it bypassed return value for binary su and it returned none. It bypassed return value for superuser.apk, data none. So it did bypass the root detection like it was supposed to. However, it is doing some other check and it's crashing and running this goodbye command. And my best guess is that's probably the tampering detection that's happening. So it's probably detecting that Frida is running on my device and that's why it's crashing. And again, I could go back and look at that native code in Ghidra and try to do that really intense reverse engineering and figure out exactly what it's doing and how it's detecting Frida. But for one, that is not really my strong suit. I'm not super great at that really intense reverse engineering. But whenever I can, in most situations, if there is a route that I can take where some work has already been done for me and I don't have to do all that reversing from scratch, I'm probably going to try to use that work that's already come before so I can get that job done faster and more efficiently. So I'm going to look at the anti-Frida bypass on the Frida code share, and I'm going to take this source code and add it to my script that I'm using to solve this challenge. So once again, I'm just going to copy that code from the code share, and then I'm going to paste it into my script, 
And I'm also, just for my own sanity's sake, I'm going to add a console command here, just to sort of give me a little mile marker so I know if something crashes in the script, I know that it finished the root detection bypass before that crash happened, just so I know where I am in my script, if there's any errors or anything that comes along. And then I'm also going to add another console command here underneath that so I know that I've bypassed the forget detection as well. So once again, I'm ready to run my script and see what happens. Okay, there we go. We bypassed both the root detection and we bypassed the freedom detection. Now we can actually run the app and try to figure out the secret. So obviously we don't know the secret right now, but let's just type something in there. It says Nope, that's not it. Try again. So now we need to do that more intense reversing and try to figure out what that exact secret is. So now I've imported my APK into Ghidra and I'm going to take a look at the libfoo.so file. And there are four different versions of this depending on what architecture you're looking at. But my emulator that I'm working with is x86. So that's the one I'm going to take a look at. But the code should be pretty much the same in all of them. So once I have my binary loaded into Ghidra, I first want to look at the main activity init function. And if we take a look back at our Java code in JetX, we remember that they had this static string XOR key. And if we look down at where the init function is called, it's actually passing that XOR key to that init function. And if we take a look in Ghidra, we see in that init function, there's this string copy. And my guess is that dat 000160 c that is probably going to be a reference to that static string, that XOR key that we saw in the Java code. So I'm actually going to rename this globally so we'll be able to recognize it if we see it somewhere else in the source code. That way we don't have to remember that dat 0001601c and instead we can just remember that that is pizza because the string is that long string of the word pizza over and over again. So anywhere we see pizza in Ghidra, that's where we know they're going to use that static string that we saw in the Java code. Next, I want to take a look at the code check function, which is where we're probably going to be able to see where that function is happening that actually decodes the string. And if we scroll down in our code check function, we see that here is that pizza variable that we just renamed globally just a minute ago. And if we look right below that, we see this while loop where they're doing some sort of math computation, which means this is probably where they're going to be checking that key. So this is probably where we're going to be able to figure out how to decode what that key is supposed to be. So if we try to do a little bit of analysis on what it's doing right here with this while loop, so it looks like it's just iterating over each character in the string and it's doing an XOR operator with each character with the pizza variable that is static in the Java code and this local 40 variable, which looks like it's coming from somewhere in the native code. So that's really the only missing piece that we need to figure out. And then we can reverse engineer this little equation to figure out what the actual secret that it's looking for is. So it looks like this local 40 variable is actually passed to this function right here. And so this function is probably what is going to be creating or generating that secret. So if we take a look at that function, it looks like it is doing some pretty complicated computation. And if we really wanted to, we could go line by line and try to figure out exactly what it's doing to generate the secret. But that seems like that would be very time consuming and very difficult. So if I can help it, I really don't want to do that because good God, that's a lot of lines of code. Fortunately, I don't think we're going to have to do that because this function actually takes a pointer as an argument. And that is this star param underscore one. And that pointer is pointing to an address in memory. And when this function completes and it does all that computation it needs to do to generate that secret, it's going to assign that secret that it generates to that place in memory where that pointer is pointing. So if we look over in the assembly code, we see that this address right here is where that pointer is located. So we can just take note of that address and take a look at that place in memory when it generates that secret. And then we should be able to see that secret in memory. So I think we have enough information that now we can start adding to our Frida script to try to pull that secret out of memory. So the first thing I want to do is just start this interceptor and attach it. And I'm going to find the base address of libfoo.so, which is that file that we open with Ghidra. 
and then I'm going to add this 0xfa0 and that was that memory address that we found with our pointer so we're looking at the base address of where in memory libfoo is and then we're just adding that amount of memory beyond that and that's going to take us to where our pointer is with that variable that we're looking for. So now I have my little skeleton code of what I'm going to do once I attach that to that address. So I don't need to do much on the on enter part. All I'm really going to do is store that answer location, which is going to show us where in memory that answer is going to be. Also, I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste this little XOR key from our Java code because I'm going to need that when I do my calculation to figure out what the key is. I'm also just going to go ahead and create a variable for the length, which is 24, and that is the length of the string for that XOR key, and that's how many times we're going to have to iterate over that loop while we're doing that calculation to figure out what the key is. We could calculate it as part of the script, but since we already know it, we might as well just go ahead and store it in a variable. It really doesn't matter. You can calculate that length as part of the script if you want but I'm choosing to just store it in a variable. So the next thing we need to do is pull that secret key out of memory and store it in a variable. So these two lines right here will do that for us. We're just going to create this buffer variable and we're going to make this byte array and we're going to go to this answer location, which is what we got using this little memory address that we pulled using Ghidra. And we're going to get the data from the next 24 bytes and store that in the buffer array. And we're going to use that to create this secret key variable. And that's what we're going to use to do that calculation to do the XOR. Next, I'm just going to use this little for loop to convert that secret key into a hexadecimal string. And here I'm just going to add a couple of console log commands just so I can keep track of where I am. So this is just going to print out the secret key and then it's going to print out that secret key after I convert it to the string. And then it's going to print out that XOR key, which is that pizza, pizza, pizza string. Now, I think the last thing we need to do is just do that calculation to figure out what the actual secret is after we XOR the XOR key and that secret key that we pulled from memory. So now we have this little for loop which goes through and XORs that secret key that we pulled from memory and then that XOR key which we got from the Java code. And we can do this because when we looked in Ghidra, we saw that equation that it was doing and it was just XORing the XOR key. That kind of gave it away with the name of the variable, but even if we didn't know that, we could see that it was doing an XOR with that secret key and then the XOR key from the Java. And if you didn't know this, XOR is a reversible operator. Fun little story real quick. Many years ago, I was actually working for a bank and I was testing an app and they were actually trying to roll their own encryption, which is always a bad idea. And instead of sending a password through the URL, which is a bad thing, that's very bad practice. You should never send a password or a username if you can help it in the URL. But instead of doing that, they actually had a quote unquote encryption key that they would XOR the password with and then they would send the XORed version of the password in the URL. So because I knew my own password that I was using and I knew that XORed value that was being sent in the URL, I was able to XOR my password with that value in the URL and find that global encryption key that they're using to XOR all of the passwords. So then I was able to find any of those quote unquote encrypted keys that were going in the URL anytime anyone was logging into that application and I could use that global XOR key to find their actual password. So by trying to roll their own encryption and make their app more secure, they actually implemented a way to bypass their entire security and find any password for any user that tried to log into their app. All of that is to say, XOR is reversible, so if you ever see something that is using an XOR, you can just do XOR again, and you can find out what that master key is that they're using to encrypt everything that they're doing. So I think the last thing I need to do is just print out the answer to the console, and then we can run this and then figure out what the secret is. Oh, and one more thing I just remembered, I actually need to set a timeout. Something I figured out when I was researching this is sometimes when I would try to run these free scripts and attach to this libfoo.so, when I would run it, that libfoo.so wasn't actually created yet. So I need to wait just a beat to let the binary run and create that libfoo.so function before I can actually attach to it. 
So now I think that should do it. I have the timeout set and I have all the calculations done. Actually, I'm glad I just took one more look at this before I tried to run it because I just noticed that I made a typo right here. I did a plus instead of a caret. So I was just going to add those together instead of doing an XOR. So that would have been disastrous. That would have given me a completely wrong value. So I'm glad I took one more look at this before I tried to run it. But I think it should work now. Let's try it out. Once again, I'm going to run Frida-L, the name of my script, and dash F, and then the name of the package, and then dash U, because I'm connected over ADB. We run that, and once again, we have successfully bypassed root, and we have successfully bypassed Frida detection. And now, the moment of truth, we need to execute this secret string function, so it'll actually execute that part of our script. So I'm once again going to just submit test, which is going to be wrong, but hopefully our Frida script will do its work and it will actually print out our correct answer that we need. Click verify, moment of truth. So nope, that's not it, try again. So test is wrong, but we see here is our secret key that we pulled from memory. Here's the secret key string after we converted it to the hexadecimal. And here's our XOR key. And here is our answer after we XOR those values together. And if we try that, making a wasp great again, click verify, success. This is the correct secret. So after doing a lot of different things, we were finally able to get our solution to this level three challenge. We had to bypass root using Frida. We had to bypass Frida detection Ironically enough, we use Frida to bypass Frida detection. And then we had to do some reversing with Ghidra and Jadex to figure out exactly what it was doing to create that secret, to do that calculation, to give us that secret string. And then we had to write some custom Frida script code to pull some information from memory and then do that reversal of the calculation with that XOR to get the actual secret. And then we're able to finally get our solution after we ran the app and it spit it out on the console for us. And I'm probably going to try to do level four at some point. It's probably going to be even more difficult than this one. And it's probably going to involve even more reverse engineering, which again is not my wheelhouse. So I will probably have to do a good bit of research and figure out how exactly to solve that one before I can make a video on it. But if y'all are interested, let me know and I will try my best to get that one solved as well.